one of these super compact little pie attenuators. You can use one of these in conjunction with a directional antenna to do radio direction finding, which is a pretty cool thing where you can tell what direction a radio signal is coming from through a process of triangulation. But to do that, you generally need to weaken the signal that you're receiving, especially when you get closer to wherever the signal's transmitting from to be able to narrow down the direction it's coming from. And to do that, we are going to attenuate the signal that we're receiving. This one that I've made here already, it's a uh, little three-stepper. It's got two tens and a four decibel attenuation switches for a total of 24 decibels of attenuation. Uh, that's not quite enough when you, got, when you get pretty close to something. Uh, at least for me, it seems like I need a little bit more. This will dampen weaker signals, but doesn't do much for the stronger ones. So uh, today I'm going to make one that just has three 18 decibel switches on it. To do that, I'm going to construct this right here. So um, you can go and look up what a uh, pi attenuator is. It's PI, not PIE. Uh, we have three of those inside of this box and we're going to build each one around one of these little switches. So what we're doing here, we're going to have our R1 be these right here and our R2s is going to be duplicated there and there. And the same on all three of them. And since all three are going to be the same, I'm just going to use the same set of resistors for all three. Uh, a 220 ohm resistor right here in the middle and uh, 275s down each shunt off the bottom. How this kind of works is when the switch is off, being open, meaning that there's no contact on the inside for the uh, power to transmit through or the signal to flow through, that it will be forced to run down through this little pi attenuator except for whenever it's on or closed, then it'll be closed and it'll just short out right here and it'll completely bypass the attenuator, therefore having no attenuation. So whenever the switches will be in the on position, if all three of them were in the on position, you'd have no attenuation. If you had all the switches in the off position, then you'd have your full value attenuation. So uh, basically you can take a good look at this diagram here and uh, that'll basically tell you how we're going to be putting this thing together is our uh, signals going to be coming from our center pin on our radio connector. I like to use BNCs because they're quick uh, but you could use like SMAs or something if you want to be more compact. So we're going to uh, basically solder a wire from right here on the center pin to one leg of the switch uh, and then build this little pi bridge off of these two little switch poles right here. You can look up online pi bridge attenuators um, or just uh, pi attenuators and you can have a calculator there that will tell you for whatever attenuation you want to achieve what resistors you need and the configuration you'll need to have them in. So they're free. There's a, a few calculators out there. They're pretty handy but you can order your resistors based off of those calculations. And uh, I got uh, only like little half watt resistors because uh, remember you're just going to be receiving through this thing. You're not going to be transmitting through it. So uh, it doesn't need to handle that much power. First things first, we'll uh, drill a hole in each end for our uh, radio connectors. And then we will split the box in half just by taking out one side of the screws the same way that we can do here. And we'll... Uh, cut our holes for our switches and set our switches inside. We got our holes the right size in the end here. So now we're just going to take apart one side of our box, doesn't matter which, and we're going to scribe that outline of the switch. And remember, we're not scribing this width right here. We're going to scribe that inner width right there because you want this to cover your edge of your hole on the outside. And these little tabs, you're going to want those to protrude inside and pop out. 
and the small area right there is going to lock the switch into the box. You can probably take a file and you want to deburr the insides of your drill holes too because they doesn't get pretty gnarly. Some of my favorite files are just uh, these simple little eighth inch chainsaw files. You drill a little hole in the golf ball, stick into the file in there, and I use these for like everything. Okay, so basically something like that. Get your hole roughed out there and then mark all three of them. Uh, keep these switches closer towards the middle, leave a bigger gap on the ends because you got to have room for this connection to stick in from the outside. So I'd say uh, tuck these three switches a little closer together in the middle. And you know what, if you get this sized box, maybe just start off with two. Two switches might be a good idea because uh, th this dude is going to be pretty tight in there. There we go. Our first, uh, our first little hole's done. Uh, I doubt the switch is going to fit in here right now. Yeah, yeah, a little, a little too tight. That's fine because we want to have a little bit of room to clean up with the Dremel. We can take our end pieces with our connection, or a little lock washer on there. Make sure that it's facing out the same side that our chamfered holes are for our screws. Make sure it's facing the right direction. And then we can put our little... Uh, ground tab on there or shielding tab that's what's going to be our ground in this circuit in just a moment and we can make sure this is sticking in a good direction just straight over top in the middle of one of these two screws not at an angle should work pretty well and we can take a pair of pliers and just really give it a good tighten see we're just going to bend over like the uh the center leg of each one of these because we're going to need some more space in here. This is all going to be super compact and tight so uh, we're fitting lots of stuff in this box. We got to make as much space as possible so we need to have those guys kind of bent over and these ones can be bent back just a little bit. You don't got to bend these ones so much. You don't want any of this to make contact with the uh, side or the housing of this box you know because then you'd uh, ground out your signal and that'd be no good. So I'm going to do the steps first and then I'm going to talk about it afterwards so it's a little easier to visualize what we're talking about here. So, first step is to solder the center pin from your radio connections on each end to that little terminal of the switch that we bent over underneath it. So, bend it kind of back up a little bit and we're going to solder here and here. So, now you have this soldered there and there to just one of the terminals of each switch. And then we need to create the rest of the circuit be this and this between the other poles of the switch that don't have anything yet. So you can see here to here I bridge a small piece of wire and then from here to here I bridge the small piece of wire. So at this point every terminal of every switch has one thing soldered to it and the ends are uh, attached to your radio connections out here at the end. So basically at this point, we have that part of the diagram where it's just a clear through uh, connection if we close all of our switches. Next, you're going to take your R1 resistor. That's this resistor that's right here, the single one. And you're going to attach that to each pole, basically cross across each one with that single resistor making sure you're only touching and soldering to those poles. Now we've got the R2 resistors. Each one of these little guys is soldered down to one pole of that switch. And they're just kind of standing up there, not connected to anything at this point. I know this is super small and hard to figure out right now, so that's why it's uh, really important to rely on this diagram right here. and. Uh, just, just reason your way through it because I know looking at uh, my soldering job right here is not going to be super helpful for you. Uh, now basically you could either run a wire from pole to pole right here on the shielding connection which is this ground right here, little ground tabs, and we're going to ground out all of these to a common ground that's going to be ran out over the top here. Here we go. It is uh, complete. So. This looks uh, so confusing, but basically all I did is I just tied all the uh, 
ends of the resistors, all the uh, R2 resistors that were hanging up, I sh ganged them all together basically. And I just uh, daisy chained them from uh, one pole of the ground to the other pole of the ground. So they're all interconnected and it's all uh, one homogeneous unit up here. Uh, basically like a ground plane that they're all connected to. And even if this touches the top of the box when you close it, that's completely fine because uh, the box from the edge of the, from the, edge of the uh, connectors down here, it's also part of the ground. So to uh, slap the box together, you'll probably have some parts uh, touching the inside of it. And that's fine. Um, just as long as none of these terminals down here are touching. See these terminals right down here at the very bottom? You don't want those to be touching, but all of this stuff that's up in the air here, any of that can be touching the wall of your box. But anyways, now we can just uh, toss it back together. Uh, put our little screws in. And then we can test it out a little bit. It's set up here on a good vantage point. We can see that uh, we've got a station that we're tuned into. This is a NOAA weather radio station, so it'll be nice and constant. Uh, as of right now, I don't have any attenuation. All the attenuators are flipped on, so that means that uh, they're just bypassing straight past all the resistors. So we've got a pretty good signal. Um, and it gets a little sketchy about here, and then we can go all the way over to here before it cuts out again. But all in the middle here, you can tell it's got a pretty good signal, so we know it's pretty much in that direction. But uh, we want to get a little bit more fine-tuned, so we can turn on one of the attenuators. And we can see that our window has got a little bit more narrow now. But it's still pretty broad, so we can step it down again. And now we can see that it cuts out there. It gets really uh, broken right out there. But it's still pretty clear straight that direction. So at this point, if you were going to do radio direction finding, you could just mark that bearing down on your map from your current location, uh, travel a few miles uh, tangent so that would be back off to our right or to our left somewhere and uh, basically do the same thing again and then uh, you'd be able to triangulate a rough area of where the signal is coming from. You could travel towards that area and just repeat the process a few times and until you honed in on where it's coming from. But uh, anyways, the, the uh, Yagi's working pretty well and the attenuator does its job so 